come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. This is probably the best thing that's going to happen to you this week. Uh, Every (laughs) week, we sit around a table and we talk about movies uh, for your listening pleasure and uh, edification. Uh, You can find us. Well, you already did. You found us on wherever great podcasts are found. But hey, you could go the extra mile. Why don't you go on over and give us a like, give us a star rating, uh, write us a review wherever you find us. Subscribe uh, even. That would probably even be the better thing. <laughs> on YouTube. Hit the subscribe, subscribe on button. YouTube. Oh, yeah, we're on YouTube. We are on YouTube. We are. That's right. For a video reason. platform where we're an audio only. But thank you for listening to us on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, join us. Uh. You know, give us a, let us know what you think of the show. Uh. Join us every week. We're always here. Uh. This is a, the like I said, this is going to be the best thing that you do today. And so, Easily. and tomorrow. Easily. Yeah. yeah. So, who are these internet radio superstars? Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> you sound so defeated, Sean. It's a somber time. Michaela. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what is if it? you're asking what, what we watched, we watched what, Man's Best what Friend. What did we watch today? Directed by uh, John Lafayette, your guy, Sean. Is he my guy? He wrote Child's Play, a movie you love, and directed uh, and wrote the second one. He, I, mean, I like both those movies yeah. very much. So mm. you, I would say you stand that franchise more than anyone else at this table. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I've watched all of them. But but like Sean yeah. constantly goes back to that. Well, it seems like you've watched them. Do you love them? Yeah. Do you enjoy most of them? I mean, Child's Play. I think like Phantasm is one of the few '80s movie don't franchises. Don't compare it to Phantasm. Well, I suppose Hellraiser <laughs> too. So we're also yeah in in murky waters here, <laughs> yeah. but the, it's a franchise that's continued without a reboot. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. and there it is. Yep. It did. Yeah, and, I know. and and, and we'll continue we'll to do. Continue. We'll continue to do well, so. That's yep. the thing. It's like because uh, John, what's his name, Laf- Lafia? Lafia, yeah, is uh, one of the credited writers on Child's Play alongside Don Mancini, who Tom I Holland? believe wrote the original script. Tom Holland, the director, did a polish. But a polish so it's on, like, yeah. how much of Child's Play is John Lafia? But I he mean, directed the second one. Yeah, and so right he's one. yeah, so he stepped. He he took over the franchise after the. Well, first one. he had it for yeah, a, a while. Bit. Don yeah. Mancini's the mm-hmm. guy. Now right. he's been running that thing for uh, I think since Bride of Chucky on, and maybe I think so. so. Running yeah. it into the ground. I maybe yeah. yeah. maybe one of the only people who likes Part Three. I think you are. No, yeah. Like, uh, well, yeah, Part Three is. Yeah. Right. I like. Part I got to go back to Part Two because I remember Part Two being pretty cool. Part Two's good. Yeah, it's very good. John Lafia was also one of the writers in the 1990 It. That we previously was covered. Yeah. Yes. He was one was of the writers. Him and Tommy Lee Wallace. Yeah. Uh, Tommy mm-hmm. Lee Wallace did that one by himself. I, I think uh, John Lafayette has made a career of being, quote like unquote, one, one of the writers yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. on this movie. Yep. On any movie. Yeah. Yep. Well, so Sean, something about I'll, his writing I'll, really well, strikes I'll, I'll, I'll at you. I'll stand Child's Play until we get to uh, uh, Cult and Curse. Because I remember we got to, what was it Curse that we brought to this show? Yeah. I was like, we got the the curse, and I was just like, ugh. ugh." Oh, I like that one. Yeah. (laughs) It was like that. They lied to me. It was the the, the return to the horror roots of Chucky after the goofy seed of Chucky. And then you got very goofy uh, seed of Chucky. It was the cult after that, which was like, yeah. But it was more Chucky. Yeah, yeah. More chunky. I'm, a, I'm all. That's like tying the whole franchise together. There, that's what I like about it. They bring back characters. They do. From, that's yeah, true. It's you all can't, in canon. Can't knock them for that. I'm all for this reboot. I'll watch it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We were uh, talking uh, about that before the show. I want to see it. Just listeners it make a note work. of what Sean's saying right now. So in a couple of months, he it. can scream about that's how much true. he hates I it. I want to see it. I, I may hate it, but right now I want to see. At it. least it doesn't look like the first movie. That's what I am like. At least I'm not going to see the same movie again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I'm down. So uh, we did not watch any of the child's no, play no, we did this no. evening, uh, but we did watch Man's Best Friend. Mm-hmm. So Michaela, what year was this? 1993. 93. Okay. Um, the year of our Lord Jurassic Park. <laughs> was that 93? Yeah, 93. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Michaela, this is part of a series that you yes. are uh, instituting we're, with this film. Yeah. This summer we're doing like man versus nature movies. <laughs> so we're starting with the domesticated animals. 
before we go to the great outdoors. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> I mean, even before this, I mean, Holly got in on the I did. Uh, really, on Lake that. Placid. With Lake Placid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of overlapped there. That's right. Yeah. So now, now I have to try and find a sequel that fits into this category. <laughs> there's <laughs> well, plenty there, of Jaws God damn sequels. Goddammit, I will. There's, yeah, there's, plenty, there's of Jaws. plenty of Jaws sequels. Michaela, I think you just sealed your fate. Uh, I, I'm, I'm I have no sure. problems with it. All right. <laughs> well, you have uh, the cinematic antecedent, and this movie is probably Cujo, Stephen King's yeah. Cujo, right? Yeah. Big St. Bernard. What yep. kind of dog is this? This is a Tibetan Mastiff. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. that's a common. Uh, the uh, mm-hmm. cover would have you believe it's a Rottweiler. but Well, it basically looks like a long-haired Rottweiler. A Terminator yeah, Rottweiler, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as yeah, the cover yeah. would say. Truth in advertising. Yeah. Yeah, so they lie. Movie, I mean, it is a pretty awesome poster. It's a good poster. Though. I like it. It's got Lance Henriksen <laughs> on the front with it. a gun with a laser pointer on it. Yeah. I mean, that's cool that, right That's there. all in the movie. And a Lance, dog that's half dog, half Terminator. Half Termidog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be uh, fair, this dog can do a bunch of awesome stuff. That's true, but it is not Except a robot. A Terminator. Yeah, and it's not a robot. This yeah. poster is telling us it's a robot. This is not the actual theatrical poster, though. No. Theatrical posters is boring looking it's terrible yeah not good it's no. like a stretched image yeah. it's like a really it is it's stretched. Bad. It's awful yeah. it's they, real bad this, this movie did have some really cool promo stuff i was actually i was watching some old trailers for it and one of the old trailers was like check keep an eye out for our promotional products and i was like what and like they were showing they had this like 3d cardboard you know you know how like when you go to the movie theater they have the cardboard displays like mm-hmm. in the lobby they had one for like the video stores that was like a little dog house and his like head poked out of it <laughs> and, his, and his jaws were open. And I was like, that's so cool. That's I kind of awesome. want it. Like, Somebody's got that somewhere. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so was, they, they really invested in the marketing of this movie. Well, it was a New Line Cinema movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, New Line Cinema. See, again, we've been talking on the previous episodes, like where is the budget level like comparatively now uh, of this movie? You know, like the New Line Cinema. So like, clearly it's like a, Maybe fifteen million dollar movie, something like that. This one, this, this was six. You know, six million dollars. Six, six million dollars. It made fifteen in the box office, though, so it's a hit. Yeah, it made its it budget made a, back. Yeah, it doubled its budget. Uh, and then some. It also made more than both the Halloween and uh, Friday the Thirteenth movies that came out. Oh, no, no, was that this? Maybe it wasn't. Ninety three, mm. maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. But yeah, I don't think we had a Halloween movie this year, did we? Not ninety three. Not ninety three. No. But there was Jason Goes to Hell. I think or was that ninety two. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So uh, no, that was ninety three, right? Because uh, Freddy's I, Dead was maybe I'm off by. I was, was thinking it was later. One and okay, you're asking what? a lot of questions, yeah. and now I have to look them all up. That's right. Uh, so this is, uh, as you said, the man versus nature. The man. This is well. See, I like to see this. Freddy's Dead is ninety one. Okay, there you go. I was, hmm. What was the other one? I was right on my second about. one. Well, Jason goes to hell. That was would the other be ninety three. Yeah, or ninety two. Ninety three. So ninety three. Um, this is a subset of Man versus Nature, mm-hmm. the When Animals Attack yes. movie. When Animals Attack movies got mm-hmm. really popular, I think following Jaws. Actually, it's it's interesting because we talk about the like kind of timelines of when slasher movies peak in Valley. Slasher movies and animal attack movies are on the same timeline. Late 70s, 90s. Really? They peak and valley at the exact oh, same timeline. They peaked yeah. then and then they peaked They peaked the in end. the 70s, kind of dip in the 80s a little bit, pick back up in the 90s, and now we're in a dip that hopefully means it's coming back around again. Well, we just had Axel, A-X-L, oh, with, uh, was that a killer dog? I it was a robot know, dog. It was that. an army dog. dog. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was oh, a, that's awful. It's, it follows the ba- the, almost the same storyline where it's a... Uh, uh, it's supposed to be a weapon developed for this one for the army yeah. that ends up a, uh, escaped out on the loose. A genetic experiment, basically, but it's a ro- full robot. Okay, full robot, full robot right. on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it gets a you know some uh young ingenues find it, adopt it as their own. The army's coming for it, and they have to fight off the army. Oh, See, Jesus. at least in that movie, those Wait. people didn't know the dog was like an experiment. Unlike Ellie Sheedy in this movie, who fully knows where she got it from. I mean, they know this. Is, I mean, it's a giant robot yeah. dog. They know it's an experiment, right? Mm. But I don't know. Like Wait, we saw this movie before on this show, and it was called Watchers. You uh, remember that? I do. Wasn't that the uh, yes, the sensitive twelve-year-old in me remembers? Yeah, <laughs> the army experiment or whatever, right? Gets loose, yeah. is adopted, and then it turns out all oh, holy hell is you know because yeah. the thing. Well, that all wasn't right. evil in that one, right? It, it the dog like was the, an evil. Yeah, the evil that monster connected to it was psychically connected to the yes. Dog. Hmm. Um, but in this movie, okay, so instead of a uh, a kid right befriending a dog, 
Correct. which I think is the general pattern for those type of films, right? Usually. It's a young boy has a dog, kind of like the, it's the inversion of Lassie mm-hmm. or something, right? Uh, this one gives us a protagonist in the form of Ali Sheedy from Short Circuit. Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. I was actually thinking she's like, does she prefer to work against animals as opposed to people? Like looking at later in her career, animals, Short robots. Circuit, her house is overrun with animals. True. Overrun. Like there's raccoons crawling up the walls and across Very her true. sink. There's kittens. Like her house is overrun with animals. I feel like that's like a personal Maybe choice. Like, like I'd rather. Tippy Hedron. Maybe she has yeah. an animal sanctuary somewhere. Maybe. I'd believe it. Maybe. I'd 100% it believe it. Maybe that's why she chose this movie. Who knows? That Maybe. I believe Honestly, that I believe she wouldn't. I believe, that, like, other than acting, that's what she's off doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Just like Lin- Linda Blair's like that, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got to check at some point. <laughs> sure. Are we, are we like right on this? Like based on your, you know, psychoanalyzing, you based off your movie choices. Um, so Ali Sheedy is a go get em reporter for KCBD News. No, K, whatever. It news. It doesn't matter. Uh, news it was K something. WJM. <laughs> In San Reno. Mm-hmm. San yes. Remo, California. Remo. San Remo. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess the whole setup of this thing is coming from the perspective of uh, uh, animal rights uh, activism, right? That was, I think, in the 90s, maybe at like a high peak. I mean, again, yeah, it felt like it. Yeah, like 20 I feel, yeah no, I feel like, yeah, no, I feel like PETA totally was really in full force by then. Yeah, because yeah. this is yeah. a message movie in several ways, but uh, that's... Is, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's we'll some after school it. specials going on in yeah. this movie. Yeah, it's a lecture movie. Mm-hmm. It's more like the, the characters are constantly lecturing other mm-hmm. characters and you, the audience, by uh, proxy. Mm. But um, so the main idea then is taking this idea that... Uh, Animals are being used in unethical experiments. There must have been like a news story or something that came to light somewhere, I'd say within five years of this movie, right? Oh, definitely. That made people think about this. And so some guy, John Lafia, said, hey, we, you know, here's an idea we can turn into a movie. So in Jaws this one. with paws. The, is, I'm sure that's like an <laughs> asylum movie. That's, that, that's the... Uh, the um the pitch or it's it's like the log line. legend has it that was the pitch for this movie jaws oh with paws <laughs> oh wow there's no, nothing to prove that that was yeah. it but the legend around it is that was the pitch. I mean, they even made a comment at one point the one detective was talking about how his girlfriend won't like won't let him have certain shampoos mm. because they're testing this was this was like the big circulation in the 90s was cosmetics that were tested on yes. animals that there was because that was being brought into light then yes. like, they have like, those like time. horrible images of like rabbits with their eyes yes. pried open with like prongs yes. like a clockwork orange style getting mm. shit like yeah and it's yeah. when people realized that all the major cosmetic companies were doing this like literally yeah. all of them all yeah. of them yeah, yeah. because yeah, like there might be 10 different cosmetic companies but they're all coming from the same two labs, you right? Know? Yeah. So, yeah, because he said something to you, like, you know, my girlfriend won't buy shampoo exactly. unless it's on a cruelty-free list or right. something like that. Yeah. Um, but Lance Henderson, he runs this company called Emacs, top secret government laboratory. You'd think they'd be able to connect the dots that the dog's name is Max and he escaped from Emacs right. a little bit more quickly, considering the share a name, pretty much. Yeah. People are dumb. Yeah. People in movies Cops are, are dumb. dumb. Well, I mean. <laughs> cops in movies are especially there you dumb. Go. Very that's, dumb. That's they the, deserve those sound effects the, that's the Halloween right 5 cops get. They basically are the Halloween 5 <laughs> cops in this movie, right? The animal control guys. Oh, yeah. There's a pair of animal control I mean, guys who make these, oh my God. every single line out of their mouth. Uh, well, we'll get to them. Okay. Oh, so Lord. let's All set right, this yeah. up. So mm-hmm. uh, Lance Henriksen runs the installation. The, the, he's the doctor who's been uh, conducting these experiments on these animals. And Ali Sheedy is a reporter, and she is uh, looking for the next big story, and that gives her a uh, an in with uh, this woman who works at the lab, who's going to bring her in after hours so she can photograph and document all of the uh, unethical treatment that's uh, that's taking place here. Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, uh. Well, I mean, so she gets into the lab, right? I mean, the, this this other woman gets uh, killed off screen by somebody. Mm-hmm. Do we have Some an thing. idea of who or what that was that killed her? We know exactly what it was. I think it was Max because it was Max's crate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is, I guess, like right at the very beginning of the movie. It's like we're establishing that whatever killed this woman and drags her through a pool of, pool of blood and all this other stuff mm-hmm. is a ferocious killing beast. Right. See, I was like, I wasn't sure. And watching it, I'm like, are they trying to say that like our protagonist dog is this 
ferocious killer like right up front. Or is there some other beast in the you know laboratory nope. that that's going to have to fight? Because this is like the movie goes one of two ways at this point. Either uh, Ali Sheedy's going to meet this cute cuddly dog that's going to defend her from the evil beast, or the cute cuddly cuddly dog actually is the evil beast. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it goes that in both those directions. Yeah, yes, <laughs> it's Jekyll and Hyde. It is both. Yeah, uh, and when we say other animals, like there's literally like bears, tigers, there lizards, are lions and yeah. monkeys, and bears. literally any animal there you can think no of. There was a lion. That, I looked. There was a cheetah. There was, there was a cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that cheetah comes in important later, as yes. does the yeah, leopard. And but true. yeah, there's reptiles. There's monkeys. There's Monkeys with Everything. their brains exposed. Yeah, that was oh, yeah. pretty. The appliances in this movie are crazy looking. Helmets like Silent Night, Deadly Night 3 going on right here. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this is the nightmare scenario of the animal, uh, 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 the friend of animals, right? Yeah. I would say the it's worse than the island of Dr. Moreau up in here. Like, yes. yeah. Dr. Moreau is kind of weirdly comical in like the stuff they're doing. Mm. This yes. is just like. Like, because you don't even really get a reason why they're doing it at all in this movie. You never really kind of find out why this place even exists. No, you well, just see the aftermath, <laughs> yeah. and the scarring. Well, of all I these think it, it does. Uh, Lance Henriksen does say at some point that basically he doesn't. Well, he doesn't actually say he's working for the military. His whole thing, and this is like it's a vague motivation, right? Where they're trying to write a villain, but they haven't like narrowed. They're not specific with why he's a villain, right? Other than he's doing cruel experiments on. Uh, animals, but the benefit of which you got to go like, okay, so what's the benefit of this? Mm-hmm. And he's very vague. I'm going to save hundreds of lives, yeah, thousands, thousands yeah. of lives, thousands of like, lives. Okay, how? Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'm going to like cut all these animals together and DNA splice them and make this right. super dog. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of losing yeah. the thread here, yeah. Lance, but. <laughs> Ultimately, the dog is going to protect people. I have a okay yeah. as That's... a military like this is the only thing. I, it's a combat dog, mm-hmm. but it's never explicitly stated. Like his contractor right? is the U.S. government or something, but that's never said. I I have a legitimate question to think about as we go through this. Who is the hero of this movie and who is the villain? Because yeah. I feel like I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Because I had this question too, and I so was, we can work it out as we okay, go through yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I the more I think about it, the more I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, yeah. No, I I feel like this movie like tonally is confused. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I. So, I but it could yeah. it could be so easily fixed, right? It's you know, Ellie like Ellie Sheedy's what the hero? The hero? Yes. Well, I would say she's more like a final girl victim than a hero. What she's trying to do. She's the damsel. Yeah. Is. <laughs> She has no agency. Is the hero part, I guess. Which is what? Trying to expose uh, okay. Lance Henriksen's company for what so it's doing So is Lance Henriksen the villain then? Yes. They're really uh, split. Yes. Okay. 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 Like, yeah. Who's but the villain then? They're splitting time between Lance Henriksen and the dog. Yes. But sometimes villains. the dog is a hero and right. sometimes Which he's a villain. Thing. Yes. Mostly it's Lance Henriksen because he's just fucking crazy. If anything, the dog's an anti-hero. And yeah, because he doesn't explicitly attack our our hero Ali Sheedy him he gets mad at her sometimes mm-hmm. but he mm-hmm. won't like attack her to try and kill mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. so yeah it's mostly Lance Hendrickson See, I would say the I'm guy. like I'm on the fence about that like I get why this, I don't understand why he would be the villain in this story yeah because everything okay the, I mean well you have to put aside the fact that he's you know vivisecting animals, animals. right but once you get past that <laughs> if you can right from then I on I mean that's kind of cut and dry for me yeah Colin. but I, sure. I guess if it's <laughs> See, this is where the movie is like, obviously wants to take this point of view. So it's it's ignoring the like, well, what are the outcomes of his research? Yes. Is it beneficial in some way other than some guy just saying it, which I don't buy. This is lazy screenwriting. Yes. But every move that he makes from the moment the dog gets loose, I can justify as like, well, that's what you do. Absolutely. I also, I also, that's why I'm like, is he a villain? Yeah, that's like, why I'm not, I'm not buying it. Like, he's being doing a villain. Things, and he's making points that are logical, arguments. logical, just yeah. like, yeah, he's telling the cops. It's like, if you don't catch the dog, he's going to kill people. Yeah. He's Help trying to prevent the a dog. Ma- he's trying to prevent a massacre. How does that make him right. a villain? If he was a right. villain, why would he, why would he even care that the dog is loose? Well, it, they make him a villain because yeah. his motivation is financially motivated. You know, it's like the dog's worth a well, million that's dollars according, well, because that's according it's according to the cops. technology. That well, is, he actually uh, says it. I think he says that it's right. A, you know. But but the cops are the ones who imply that he's got everything riding on the dog being a success. 
Yeah, but at this point, they have actually figured that out. Um, that part, yeah. Okay. He's got a whole fucking lab full of other animals. What, like, is one really that big of a loss when you still got that many? Well, I think all the animals are going into, into that animal. That that's seems like an unwieldy experiment. And then it gives <laughs> this dog uh, the night vision of an owl. It gives mm. it the speed of a cheetah. It gives it the camouflage properties <laughs> of, of a, a chameleon. chameleon. Yeah. The, uh, it can climb a tree like a leopard. This is the Jurassic yep. World dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. going on right here. It is. The in- Indominus Rex. This yes. is the, yeah. But it also is like hyper intelligent too. They said yes. it can understand yeah. like 350 complex s- commands. commands. Yeah. So like, that's English not even words. Or but like, Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Take your it's bilingual. Oh, yeah. Bilingual. For comparison, your average normal dog has like the intelligence of like a three year old and they can understand like 60 words, ma- words, not even phrases, just words max. So that's quite a bit more mm-hmm. intelligent than your average dog. So. Yeah, it's super dog. I mean, the whole beginning of the movie is trying to set up that, you know, this is the best dog ever, right? Okay, so how does Ali Sheedy uh, come into uh, possession of this dog? She breaks in. She stupidly opens the cage to get, like, a video shot of it. Mm -hmm. Dog runs out. Yeah, but this is as a reporter, right? Yeah. With her camera running and her camera woman Trying to find a story about the the, uh, cruel... uh, Animal cruelty. Uh, animal cruelty. Yeah. Uh, in as the experiments in this lab are going on. But it sets her up as like one of the most irresponsible like reporters like of all time. You know, I mean, she kind of is terrible at everything in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit. Yeah, especially in those opening scenes where it's like, okay, they're breaking in, so that's against the law. You know, but no, we're in pursuit of a higher goal. Here is exposing the stuff that's going on, and we're letting the animals out of their cages. You know, which mm. is like. You don't even know what they're doing. Then she takes off the uh, the the medical harness yeah, or whatever the thing has on, haphazardly just taking yeah. stuff off of animals, it's which is like, like this is unwise. Like mm-hmm. you're not thinking this through. You don't know what this thing is. You no. just think it's a dog. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's like you don't know. Well, and it just seems really short sighted. It seems like the better long term goal would be to collect as much footage as you can and then like expose them right. and then save all the animals. Maybe mm-hmm. you know. Her goal's really short-sighted. She gets really mm-hmm. sidetracked by a cute dog, which I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get that. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> but that's why I was like, why did, Why are they choosing, instead of doing like the boy and his dog story, to do the woman and her dog story? And I'm like, that's because she's got this emotional attachment to the dog. Right. I mean, dog and, we don't make, and we don't want to make a kid's movie. Yeah. Again, oh, boy. Because that's a cliche, I think, at this point, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so the dog gets loose and uh comes with her, right? Yep. So, yeah, jumps in her car, and he her uh, so she's got this top secret lab animal, which she must know is a top secret lab animal because yeah. she got it from the top secret lab. Da-da. Makes no sense, yeah. Is the lab top secret? Yeah, she had to pay yeah. like under the table to even get in there, yeah. The lab, but does she know that it's just like. I mean, most the labs aren't are. open to the public. I would say the lab is not top secret, but the experiments happening within the lab are secret. Well, I think so. Well, I think yeah. she knows the lab and not the experiments. I don't. But, but if you have to know. pay someone who works there, like, ah. like you know, under the table to even get in, that means that they're not really open to the public. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she ends up. They go to a, <clears throat> a grocery store where they're attacked by this mugger in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And Max comes to the rescue, uh, chases the guy down. He unlocks the door in the car first, which was your first hint that he's intelligent because he can unlock know. the car door. And he brings her uh, purse back to her. Mm-hmm. And at this moment, it's love at first sight. Sure. Sure. I get Wouldn't it. Would you love a dog? Yeah, if like, a dog did that for me, fuck yeah. Yeah, because yeah. well, yeah, mm-hmm. you want the movie dog that, you know, is like super intelligent. And they know all that. I mean, that's the, the, this is why you go to the movies, right? It's to see the, you know, Anthropomorphic animals, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where they're like, you know, smart. The idealized than your dog. version. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Things you want your dog to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you do with you get this dog? You take it home. I mean, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. this is what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Take Obviously. it home. She has a uh, live in boyfriend. Perry. Damn, um, this guy. Perry. I think his name's Perry. His Perry. Name's Perry. Yeah, Perry. Perry. It's established, though, before we meet him, that him and the parrot don't get along. 
That's right. They, they say the that, they, that the parrot hates him and the parrot says, screw you. The foul mouth parrot. Yeah, it's always telling. Parrots, it's not foul mouth off. if it's not swearing. I'm sorry. You can't say foul mouth when it's saying screw you. Okay, fine. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's that's how that guy describes yeah. it. But I'm like, it's not like he's cussing at you. This is our R- rated movie. Yeah, I think, if he wanted to I say fuck you, he would. Is is as uh, harsh as he gets. In yeah. The movie. Well, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, I was curious again. I'm like, is uh, is Perry a bad guy in the movie? I think so. Yeah, I think he's kind of a dick. Yeah, I think he's. The, I don't. I don't. I don't think he's. This was a point ba- of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is this is a point of contention. Uh, between uh, a few people d- watching this movie, uh, I, if I was dating someone that attempted to kill my dog, well, all right, they're a bad person. We, all right, if we back up <laughs> to the beginning, <laughs> to of the this. beginning of yeah. it, we're talking about the decisions made between yeah. uh, a, uh, a couple living together and what animals get brought home. Uh, without telling the other person, there's a giant mm-hmm. fucking right. dog. Yeah. It's a giant yeah. dog. It's a giant now, dog. I, now I happen to agree. Do I like Perry? No. Right. Do I agree with his arguments in the bringing home of this dog? Yes. I, I guess my thing is there was no established permanence at that point in time. Like I don't. I didn't feel like the conversation was we got to keep him permanently. It's a, it's, it's a bad conversation. Like like they need to more. They're not communicating yeah. with they, each other. No, yes. they're not. That's the thing. That's they need true. to be more clear in what's happening. However, with this if dog. a dog saved me from getting <laughs> mugged at knife point, I'm and it has no clear owner. I'm obviously bringing it home at least for sure. the night to stay in my house. Sure. Yes. So everyone should be asking more questions <laughs> yeah. here. Like, yes. all right. So I key information is, is left right. out. Yeah. Everyone's not mm-hmm. talking to each other, and I think is the problem with mm-hmm. these two people. Well, I had a problem with well a problem. I mean, again, there's a movie that's it's putting a point of view on you because just in the casting. They cast this guy. I'm sorry, I can't remember what the actor's name is, but but it's a combination of like John Travolta and Tony Goldwyn. I have been informed by MF. Oh no, Mag, is he on the wall? Who and is a the little keeper bit of, uh, of the wall of uh, fame? Shooter McGavin. A little bit. A little bit. What's his name? That. Chris Mc. Chris, Chris McDonald. Chris McDonald? Yeah. 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 His yeah. name is uh, Frederick Lane. I've L-E-H-N-E. seen him in a bunch of stuff. And he apparently we have seen him several times here on the Saturday Night oh, Freak Jesus, Show. Oh Jesus, is he on the wall? He was in Man's of Best Friend. He was the pilot in Con Air, and he was uh, <laughs> Lewis Fremont in the Nightmare segment of the movie Terror Tract. Hmm. So Terror Tract. Wow. The, wa- the hallway. The hallway. Of the hallway. Yeah. yeah he no, the but hallway. this movie does put Lance Henriksen on the wall of fame. Oh yeah. About God. time for Near Dark. He was the king, if you remember. He was amazing in, in Super, oh, he was Mario, Super Brothers. Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Man's best friend. Yeah. Um, right. That no. man has like, like almost two hundred IMDb credits too. And so we honestly, we probably should have right, gotten to him fine. sooner. We yeah, put but... him on the wall. <laughs> After we've done three hundred and yeah. yeah. episodes. Yeah. 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 Um, but I guess I was sitting there going like, I don't know if I'm supposed to identify, like I was identifying with Perry in mm. some of the, that's what I'm saying. Who's the villain and well, who's but the, I didn't like, like, I guess one of my point is like the way that they cast him and the way he's performed, he's a dick, but some of the points that he's yes. making throughout mm-hmm. the movie, because he's actually the one who figures out like what the, the dog is a, a mm-hmm. danger. The dog is trying to kill him because the dog's trying to assert its dominance in the household yes. and become the alpha and sees him as the yes. the challenger. He uh, initially is like, there's no dogs in this house. And she's like, you know, well, I want a dog. And he's like, well, we should go sit and talk. And, you he know, said, you can't one. do it without talking to me first. Yeah, which then, is, he was which like, then he goes yeah. back on in the third act of the movie entirely. Yeah, because, yeah. well, because his dickish, you know, he's being a dick there. Basically, he, he brings needs to be in control of the situation. a dog that he wants and he names Spike, the exactly. little dog later. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but And teaches it to chew on power cords and pull yeah, plugs, yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah. He's dumb. Yeah. yeah, he's not a he smart is. man. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. feel. But like I, just... I didn't feel like he was written as awful as right. he was portrayed. I don't know. In, in the, that third know. act, when he, I don't know, trying to poison a dog with rat poison is a pretty fucking villainous behavior. Well, this is like he, but he's aware at that point. Like this is no ordinary dog. The dog is chewed through at some point his uh, brake lines. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's like, aware that the dog is yeah. trying that's to kill him. That's what I'm saying. But like, but then it's like that's the problem with this movie is it has the whiplash of like that scene. He's doing that, so we're supposed to think he's in the right because the dog tried to kill him with the cutting the brakes. But then, like in the next scene after that, something that will happen that will put the dog in the hero position. That's right. the problem. It yeah. keeps yeah. switching back and forth. It can't pick a lane. Not, so who is yes. the villain and who's the hero of this movie? How am I supposed to feel about this dog? Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, they're not. 
They're not being clear here. No, no not at all. Not at all. They're jumping all over the place. Well, the, the dog, especially because it turns into a dog sex comedy at one point. But we'll get to that. The, there's a dog well, sex scene in this movie. I'll tell you how we can get to that. This movie, and this is maybe it's, a foreplay scene. it's uh it mm-hmm. in its in its brilliance. All okay. right. Wow. The, all right. The, Just throw those words around. Well, because Colin. I don't know if I've seen this done. Uh, before where basically it feels like a screenwriter sat there and said like i'm gonna make a movie about a killer dog and so i am going to come up with every single fucking cliche about dogs that i can think of and put them all in one movie we got dog and paper boy dog and mailman Mm -hmm. dog Dog and cat (laughs) you know it's like i mean it just there were several other ones that are and now i'm blanking out on them dog and fire hydrant it's checking off like every single dog cliche, dog and dog catchers. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it was everything. I all in love one that film. about it. Yeah. yeah. And so each thing, a dog, you know, puppy love, you know, with the, he sees oh, the, Jesus, the neighbor's yeah. dog. Uh, <laughs> this movie is labeled as partly a comedy on is it? every website that it's on. I'm pretty sure on Wikipedia and IMDb, it's like comedy slash horror slash. Well, that's got to be a revisionist uh, thing. It, it probably has to be. It has to be. Horror, and now it's like comedy. Yeah. Because it's featured in the movie Friday. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's extensively <laughs> featured in Friday. They watch a whole scene of that in this movie. Yeah. Like, That's well, your ass, postman. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, so it does, uh, you know, the, 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 the paper boy throws a paper and hits him on the head. So he's got to chase the paper boy down. Yep. Uh, Honestly, if a paper him. boy does that to my dog, I'm going to look the other way, well. whatever my dog decides to do. <laughs> if someone intentionally throws a newspaper in my dog's head. Yeah, you, oh, did you, you think he was intentionally threw? Yeah, he laughed at it when it hit it in the face. Oh, yeah, yeah, that kid was an that. asshole. Yeah, I don't think he threw I don't, it on, I don't no. think he did it on purpose. He was an asshole, but I don't think he did it on purpose. Though I would love to see your dog chase down a paper boy. He, oh. he would. He hates bikes more than anything, so he absolutely would. He hates That's bikes. That's funny. I'd love to see your dog kill someone. <laughs> Just he tried. So I'm saying this he because tried. Michaela's Charles. dog is a gigantic, fearsome beast. <laughs> A pug. Huge. He's a twenty-five. <laughs> he's, he's an overweight pug. <laughs> he's so cute. Yeah. I give him a block, and that's and then he's hey, done. That like, dog. Yeah. That dog walks three miles with me in the summertime. On probably two or three times a week, he can go hiking. He's pretty fit, far. He, oh, yeah. I, I would say I would Jesus, just. I wouldn't say he's fit. fit, but I would say there's muscle under the fat. He's fat, but he can touch his toes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what we're saying here. And he uh he like thinks he's more intimidating than he is. So <laughs> they all do. Yeah, yeah they, they all do. think yeah. they're bigger. It's all about the yeah. fighting the they dog. Have big dog yeah. syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, there is uh the the highlight of these uh, sequences. I think is uh. Oh, the junkyard dog. That was the other thing. Mm. Uh, yeah. the, the highlight of these sequences is um, the uh, the chasing the cat. Mm-hmm. There's a neighborhood cat who's that like. That scene, like, it's, I mean, it goes on a, maybe a little long, the chase. Um, but when he gets to the climax where he actually swallows the cat whole, like, just the spectacle of how they had to shoot that is worth it alone. Like, yeah, because yeah, there's like, all right. We gotta pull a cat through a puppy. Don't we? <laughs> that cat does not want to go. <laughs> no, the cat's like, meow, meow. It's, it's got it, arms it's, out. It, yeah, it's like if you've ever tried to put to a cat in there. a carrier. You know how they stick their legs out when you try yeah. to put them in the carrier. That's what's happening, but through a prosthetic yeah. dog mouth. Yeah, if you can imagine that. I think Kevin Yeager. Uh, yeah, yeah. he did the puppet. That. But yeah, just yanking a cat through yeah. a dog. through a, through nope, a dog mouth dog tunnel. Mouth. Um, that's our other child's play connection. Kim Yeager did the effects and oh, dog right, puppets right. for this. He also did all the child's play stuff. I think he did some Nightmare on Elm Street. Stuff. He did a yeah. lot of yeah. stuff. Yes, he mm-hmm. he's done four a bunch. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, maybe yeah. uh, several other. Mm-hmm. This is Friday the Thirteenth in there and... somewhere, and yeah, he's done a bunch. Oh, yeah. It's funny Trick how that... or Treat famously in the uh, film uh, Trick or Treat, and there it is. So. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I love how the cat st- like it's not a smooth motion. The cat like stutters a little bit to go down the throat, you know, because it's put its feet out. Fighting. It's really fighting. Does not want to go because no cat ever went quietly no well, because, did we say that the dog uh it grows talons you know so it can it climb straight up a tree and the cat's like fuck and the dog's <laughs> like just right on its ass the dog acting in this movie did we figure out what the dog's name was the actual dog that we- uh it said there was five dogs credited but they don't have imdb credits there's oh, like okay. no information about this movie on the internet uh, there's like none mm. oh, well so. now we must go back to our documentary of uh movie animals yeah that's and right add the maxes to it i i found them to be really mm. emotive they're very good yeah you know, really good they're very acting. good Dogs. Yeah, it this, did. I did see there was a credit uh, I during saw the film for a uh, Max's behavior by, oh. and uh, he's not on the back of the box. Unfortunately, it was like Chris Rowe Max, or something. Max's like behavior, that. yeah. So the trainer, 
the trainer. So I mean, trainer like did the, very well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, because this dog is expressive. I mean, the the scene that I loved was when uh, Perry tries to to poison him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he puts, so like, good. Rat, rat dead poison right. mm-hmm. in Even his before that, dish. where he's like Perry's rooting around and the dog's like, huh? <gasps> that, oh, yeah. oh my god, that he, that was like the most human reaction. So after he killed the postman, he dra- he drags him underneath the the house and starts burying him. And and he Perry comes home and is calling for Lori. And as soon as he does that, the dog freezes and then looks up at up above him. And that's like the most human reaction a dog yeah. could have because he's not even calling out for the dog. He's calling out for Lori, but he's like, oh fuck, someone's home. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's I mean, good. But that looked like I don't ever know if I've seen a dog do that kind of. It's the Jack Nicholson look where you know, is, you're looking yeah. down, but his eyes come his out. Eyes look up. Just the, his eyes. That's yeah, he sniffs the good. food, and then like his eyes come yeah. out, and you're like, oh, shit, and you hear the growl. That was yeah. impressive. Yeah. That was really good. That's yeah. good. Like, that's good dog acting right there. Mm-hmm. A lot of good dog acting in yeah. this movie. Mm-hmm. Good puppy. There is. If there are Academy Awards for dog actors. There's dog awards out there somewhere. You know, I feel like we've seen a lot of movies with like German Shepherds doing like the dog acting. Maybe this breed, the Tibetan Massive, should come back around into the movies Maybe. because I feel like, I mean, it helps that they have the little like tan eyebrows, right? <laughs> no. So like you can see nice. their emotions better when they have yeah. eyebrows in their fur, but like, yeah, the eyes especially were really expressive in this movie, so. I, yeah. I think mm-hmm. we should give a special Oscar to the cat who got dragged through a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> the cat was so Personally, mad. <laughs> that's well, that, my thoughts. He did look appropriately scared. With, I mean, he I was. believed his yes. performance. Yes. When he got to the top of that tree. <laughs> that cat was like, fuck. There's nowhere else to go. Yeah. And he's looking around. Yeah. I'm like, I believe that this is really happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this I cat's that being cat chased scared. by a dog. I feel like they only... that. I feel like that shot of him coming through the dog mouth puppet, they shot that once. I feel like they had one shot of that, and that was all that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Uh, the dog also uh, has a romance scene. Oh, boy. Set to the song Puppy Love. Uh, that <laughs> With a, uh, what kind of dog is that? It's a Help collie. Me. It's a collie. Uh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Border collie? No, I'm just, just a regular collie. collie. about this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, because uh, the it's... dog tries to make a move on the the collie earlier, but is prevented by a fence. And this a white time, picket fence. Well, you got to have that. So many. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the dog uh, jumps over the fence. Yeah, at one point, it was like. Goes uh, in through the open window, just like teenagers in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> collie like runs up the stairs to the bedroom. Yeah. yeah. If, it's if on you climbed the bed. some lattice work in the back, that <laughs> would have made it better. Yeah. <laughs> and it could have, because it can climb things. It could have, yes. The chase. Yes. You know? Yeah. And uh, it's uh, the uh, scene reaches its climax with a, a howl. But the oh, dog, boy. the dog kicks enough. the door shut before kicks it gets the, the door shut. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I need my privacy for yeah. what's about to yeah. happen. But it, it like peeks around the door and then it sees the collie on the bed and then it runs in and kicks the door shut. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It is the goofiest thing. This is why it's considered a comedy. Can you Uh, imagine shooting that? There was no people in that scene. It was two dogs, and you had to shoot a romance scene between two dogs. That's where I see one, just one guy in the corner going, I went to college. <laughs> I went to college for this. <laughs> just what are we doing? It's just like oh, I guess we're making a movie. All right, let's go back to one. Let's do it again. Yeah, yeah. Well, like uh, Ali Sheedy's character in this entire uh, thing remains blissfully unaware that there's anything wrong, really, with uh, Max. Yeah, she's yeah. completely ignoring how aggressive this dog is. But to be she fair, she didn't, see, she didn't know anything about the cat stuff because that was the neighbor kid. But she's seen oh, how it reacts to Perry. Like, this dog is reacting. But her, the parrot also hates Perry. So, like, they they already set up that, like, animals in this guy just don't work. Yeah, because it could be, I mean, Perry also doesn't like the dog. The dog mm-hmm. doesn't like him. Yes, it's overly aggressive and hostile, I right. think. Uh, but the friend even should. has a conversation with her at the beginning of like, oh, that parrot hates him. Like, they set up the fact that, like, this animals guy and animals and don't guy, work. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. Sorry, I got sidetracked when no, Michaela okay. mentioned the next door neighbor kid. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what the yeah, fuck is kidding. going on in California? This is all I can ask because this is a suburban California, and I assume this is the only place in the fucking country where this happens, where the precocious neighbor kid kid <laughs> it's not who's happening in on New York. skates or a skateboard usually. Uh, in this case, it's rollerblades. Mm-hmm. And with his uh, baseball cap uh, turned on backwards, yes. just comes into your house and is like, Hey, Cheryl. What was her name? Lori. Hey, Lori. You know, <laughs> hey, Kevin. That's probably not it. They are more but, friendly than parent and child. Yeah. yeah. More yeah. friendly than that. Is, like, that. is that what happens? It's like you get single people in a house together in like suburbia and like the neighborhood kids like just, you know, 
We're gonna become best friends. I never just what? I never just walked into my neighbor's house. Like if maybe no one if, has ever done. No, this, right? like no. if it was if it was like neighbors that had kids that were my age that we were friends. But you don't just walk into your neighbor's house that doesn't have children. Well, and what? you wouldn't like, start rifling weird. through their fridge, right? No, like, you just go for the that's pizza. That's weird. And, what that's I think, I think the thing is, or the theme is, is that she collects. Animals. She and collects I think strays. This, this yeah. kid is another stray. Yeah, and I it think that is the whole thing. Yeah. See, yeah. I I think that's I think you're right, and I think that's an optimistic way of looking at it because I think the kid sure. in this movie was literally there to just like act as a buffer between her and the violence that the dog was committing. Yeah, and also to provide the dog with a potential victim. Yeah, because he takes the dog out. Like, yeah, I'm going to take your new dog out, and we're going to go wander down the street, chase cats, and whatever mm-hmm. though. Mm. Yeah, and then abandon it. Because like, whoa, that was horribly violent. It Mm -hmm. ate that cat. Mm -hmm. Even though they encouraged it to eat the the cat. Second, Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't think it was gonna do it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's always kids, man. Yeah, kids always say that. That's such bullshit. We didn't really think they were gonna do it. Then why'd you say it? Yeah, you wanted it to happen. You just don't want the consequences for the action. They're not thinking that far ahead. Mm -hmm. Little fucking bastards. You know, Marty just kind of wandered into Doc's place. This is the same kind of thing, right? (laughs) 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 Yep, it's exactly. Exactly. You just like wander that. in, yep. help yourself to whatever's in the fridge. Exactly. Yep. Make yourself a smoothie or no? I it was mean a, that that shake. shake. The origin of that relationship was never really established. Yeah, that it's always been a question. That's of always mine. I've wondered. I've yeah. always wondered that. How did they yeah. become friends? Yeah. yeah, and no, no one thinks it's weird. There's no, no one feels that. the need to comment yeah, on he's, it. He's in high school. Yeah, and he's an old man. Yeah, <laughs> no one's questioning an old, this. An old man that lives alone. <laughs> yeah. No one's questioning this. Okay, yeah. great, mm. awesome. He's got gigantic amplifiers. Um. Let's not, but, su- don't sully that relationship. Yeah, okay. I love it. <laughs> but don't. this kid, uh, you know, uh, oh, where was I going with this? She gets, uh, he gets a little, does he get a lecture? I think he does. He goes for the pizza like a normal person would. Mm. She's telling him like, no, you got to drink celery juice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lecture was, movie. Right, right, right. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to get a snack. And she's like, oh, there's carrot sticks and celery juice. <laughs> what? Water. Murky water. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Green, telling you, this shitty is what, water. Th- it's eating all this stuff that has made her like a character who's just kind of oblivious to all the everything that's happening in the plot. <laughs> the, no protein, the, 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 the lack of protein. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. Although I mean, she has ice cream in the fridge, but apparently doesn't eat it. She's got pizza in the fridge. Perry's, yeah, Perry's. It's all yeah. Perry's. Perry. I'm telling you, yeah. I like Perry. You know, not the whole way because he's got deplorable stuff, but he does. <laughs> he's got his head screwed on more than she does in some cases. I understand some of Perry's. I understand some of Perry. Yeah, he eats pizza. He I eats get pizza. That. I get that. In um, a house full of uh, uh, celery and carrots, yeah, 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 he eats yeah. pizza, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but uh, again, he's not a good guy. But. Right. But um, so, well, I was going to say that they bring in the cops, but Perry doesn't bring in the cops. Lance Henriksen, who's the also like they keep cutting back to his whole uh, plot here. He's trying to get his dog, trying to convince the cops that, like, you know, I gave the dog uh, a, a, a drug, and once the drug runs out, the dog's going to have a psychotic episode, and it's going to go crazy, it's going to kill a bunch of people. And uh, Lance Hendrickson, see, this is the thing about, like, his characterization, even though we're saying he's making, like, decisions that seem rational, his characterization is, like, outside the box. Right, his acting of those... Uh, declarations is a little it's a little wild he's always yeah. slapping the table and so he's, hitting he's an angry man yeah, he's always hitting something You're clearing things off yeah. I know it's like Bishop right and Aliens mm. was like a kind of a lovable guy but everything else I see like Lance Henderson it's like that guy is a, a man dick. capable of a lot of violence of murder yeah. Yeah. <laughs> many yeah. murders <laughs> you know. agreed um so he's trying to get the dog back. He hires the, or he hires, he six the cops on it. So we've got these police uh, detectives who are also uh, trying to, to uh, uh, find the dog. Uh, oh, there's the lecture there about, you know, smoking and what you're right. eating and all this. Yeah. They're bumbling and it's, it's, it's the 80s and 90s. So we're talking about cops and their diet. Cops mm-hmm. are talking about their yeah. diet and eating something. It's and then chubby one cop that's constantly eating. Yep. Yeah. And there's the other cop telling him how he shouldn't be eating yeah. it all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. This is the trope of the. But these cops are, I don't know if they're geniuses. Somehow there was like a great uh, uh, exchange of they're dialogue. They're still cops. They still got to where they are for some reason. Well, they're trying to figure, everybody's trying to figure out where the dog went. You know, it's like it, nobody seems to think of the fact that like Lance Hendrickson actually saw uh, two women with a gigantic TV camera mm-hmm. and with a fucking light yeah. on it. Well, and doesn't wouldn't shouldn't this facility have security camera footage? Uh, yes, they should. Yes. So yes, they check should. that. Yes, you'd think. 
But no. So they have to like, we're, I don't know, we're going to show him a bunch of pictures of, you know, animal activists. Maybe it's them. He's like, no, he's and she's a reporter locally, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't she be somewhat yeah. identifiable? And right. He's like, yes. I've seen your show. And no, no, no. Is it? Eventually he does find out who she is because she right. dropped a tape behind. Um, but the, uh, the cops make this leap, which I just found completely fascinating that, uh, you know, the girl that we told you about at the beginning of the film that got attacked by the dog, uh, the cops are like, you know what? I think, I think he killed that woman and he's hiding it or whatever. And like, I'll tell you how I, how I know this. He was a MIT grad. Who ended up like inventing a chemical? Mm. Who ended up like having a nervous breakdown? Who ended up like uh, you know getting all these dogs? We should get a warrant and go there. And you're sitting there going like, wait, back this what? How did you're like you know convinced that this guy like killed <laughs> this woman? Like what the hell are you talking about? Cop logic. I have a question though. Mm. She did die in his lab. Dog ate her whole. I don't know because we saw thing. the. Garbage. Is that her? Wasn't in there? that her body in the garbage? Is that her in there? They never oh, really have, are clear. I have many questions. Garbage, like a, she died in the lab. I don't think she got eaten whole. Two, because I'm going from A to two. She gets uh, the dog gets shot with a tranquilizer by someone, mm -hmm. which is I'm uh, guessing, and I don't think it's uh, uh, Lance Hendrickson. I think it's some doctor or somebody else is working in there. But would Lance Hendrickson not know that she died in the lab? I'm, I, I have to. I, I, I have to believe that Lance Hendrickson knows she died. No, I, in I that feel lab. like yeah. I feel like he knows, especially because when they're questioning him about her, he's very cavalier about it, and he's very like, "Oh, she just never showed up to work." Well, clearly she did, and I she think did. he knows that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I well, think that, he that knows. adds villain points. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Yes. Like yeah. this adds to. We're trying to figure mm -hmm. out a villain. It adds a little bit to that because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure he knows she died mm -hmm. and how she died. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Well, the dog eventually, like, well, they the police are after the dog because they find the uh, the mugger was mauled by the dog, and so now the dog yeah. has a taste of blood. Any animal that kills a person yeah. got to be put down. Yes. And so they're like, this dog's gonna come back to the house. So they're waiting for the the dog to show up, but the dog ends up like a serial slasher in a movie, like kills the cop while he's still yes. sitting in the car. We don't see this, you know. Mm -hmm. She comes out like, help me, help me, and. Body the, falls out. Of course, it's the uh -huh. cop car scene. Yeah, the cop yeah. car scene. Uh, please help me, please help me. Open yep. the door, oh. <laughs> dead cop falls out. How many times have you seen this? How many well, times yeah, has well, this happened? And even before that, it attacks Perry and attacks the little boy, too. It does kill Perry, yeah? No. No, no. no it pisses acid on his face. Oh, that's right. It does. Right. It has acid for pee. <laughs> yep. It yeah. does. And it, it pisses right on his face. It's yes. awesome. Yep. Which, cool. All right, yeah. I'll give it that. It's pretty dope. I need to see what it does to his face. Yeah, where's Come the, on. the result the, of this? Come what, on. What is, what is the acid pee? Is, uh, it's a, it's a byproduct of... Yes. I of, mean, is it like genetic modification? Was, yes. there, was there like a, a snake involved and it's like venom pee I mean, there was snakes or? in that lab. Was it they venom, showed it a venom montage, pee? So. I think it's just the combination of all these animals and the acidity builds up and then it's just <laughs> yeah. pee. Yeah. yeah, I'm giving it a little more I, than it gives us. I mean, there are like... There I are like, like venom pee, but okay. Saying, venom like, pee's cool. There are like but... those snakes that like spit venom at your yeah, eyes. You know, it's like thinking. acidic. So, hey, and they, I'm, they, I'm all for all of these. When they did the little computer montage of all the yeah. animals it was spliced with, there was a snake in there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's possible. That's, That's what I was. Okay. Whatever burns yeah. this dude's face, yeah. I just oh, want yeah. to see it. Totally yeah. makes sense. A lot of uh, animals with pee uh, that's acid. You've never. Uh, it doesn't burn when you guys pee. <laughs> oh, uh, Sean, you need to talk yeah, to a doctor about that. Out. Thing. You gotta get that checked out. Oh, there's also the scene where she. Uh, we have a surprise cameo by uh, William Sanderson, the great character actor. William Sanderson plays a, a junkyard uh, oh, yeah. owner that she does try to give the dog away to him. He turns out to be like a rat bastard burning the dog's face with a blowtorch, which gives it this milky cataract mm -hmm. eye. Which is Looks like pretty actual, awesome, yeah, actually. It's a contact yeah. they stuck in this dog's eye, yeah. and burns half of its dog face. Contacts, who knew? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kills him, bites his balls off. Yeah, and then heads back for the final showdown, which is uh, Lance Henderson takes Ali Sheedy and they hightail it back to the lab because you know, in the uh, method of uh, story economy, you got to start where you, you or end where you finished. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. For the big giant showdown yep. between the uh, aggressively now psychotic Max. And uh, and Ali Sheedy, who's like, what? Max is attacking. This dog also on the way back leaped over like three police cars. That yeah. Yeah, one, one jump. It was awesome. Yeah. Bravo. Over to that dog. And Early CG. Whatever CG. Yeah. <laughs> whatever the CG yeah. operator put him in there. 
Yeah, that was wonderful. CG composite or something. We like were doing that. so well up till that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well. Um, but yeah, so what? How does this movie wrap up then? I mean, we got every all of our, mm-hmm. our surviving characters, of which there are two. Uh, they get into a major car crash that should kill them. That should kill okay. everybody. <laughs> this is one of the okay. So so Max, the idea Lance Henriksen is is basically I'm going to abduct Ali Sheedy. Mm-hmm. So Max will follow. The dog has imprinted on her. Yes. So Max runs at cheetah speed and is able to chase the car, gets on the car while it's driving at full speed. Dents mm-hmm. the roof in. Yeah. Well, and, super strong. Yeah. Yeah, he's and then a fucking head butts the windshield. Because <laughs> yeah. it's right on the hood of the car staring yeah. into it as they're driving. And this whole time, Ali Sheedy has her new puppy in her hand. All right. The new that, puppy. Spike. That, that fucking Perry decided it's okay if he may adopt a dog on his own and right. yeah. forces it on her. Obviously. And, uh, he's doing it for love. But, Okay. I, <laughs> no, that's not how that works. Especially when you say like, "This is a decision we need to talk about and make together," and then you go and make the yeah. decision on your own. And he literally, yeah. he literally says, "We need to go down and pick it out together." Yeah, yeah and yeah. then he and literally, he and then he himself. goes, does it himself. That F- is fuck the, this guy. It's the guilt peace offering because he tried to kill. But the then other he doesn't girl. even let her name it. Yeah, I know. He doesn't he even let her probably, name it because he's probably a jerk. Let her yeah. name it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he's also not a good guy. That fucking. And then he's teaching it to pull. Plugs out of the outlet. He's done teaching the puppy to do that. Look, mm-hmm. isn't this fun? And uh, but yeah, but she hey, has this puppy hey, in her hand. Who's the savior of this movie? But Spike. It, but it doesn't make any sense <laughs> because he teaches the dog to pull it out, and the dog puts it in. I so know. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> in order to electrocute one it's of our, it's not dogs. worth it. <laughs> well, it's interesting that. Well, it's I mean, yeah, walk. there's a there's a car crash with the dog on the hood. Yeah, and the other three, uh, you know, the puppy in, in hand. Yeah. So. They shall be dead. And they all go oh. into this yeah. fiery wreck and all just crawl. And no problem. I mean, because mm-hmm. Sean was very worried, I think, at this point mm-hmm. in the movie. He was like, well, they should all be dead. I'm like, no, the car no, landed on its roof. Not so well, worried fine. as indignant as in they should all be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Broken yeah. bones, at least. Yes. Yeah. Concussions. Dead. But no, yeah. everybody's Nobody's fine. wearing a seatbelt. Mm-hmm. No, they, they are bleeding. And she's yeah. got a black guy. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Yep. As yeah. they go back into the complex. Puppy is spotless. Don't worry. Sp- Puppy's fine. Puppy's fine. Because you can totally hold fucker. on to a puppy. Maybe maybe he's a super crack. dog too because he lived through this no problem. Maybe. That would have been the great tease at the end, like have something happen to his eyes or something to tease that he's like the next generation of the super dog. Oh boy, that well, Perry <laughs> accidentally picked up another super dog from. Oh, uh, he was in on it or something. <laughs> like, there's no need for that because we get that anyway. Yeah, we get a uh, we get a tease at the we end. We get halfway setting there. up man's <laughs> best friend too that never happened. Okay, but the the dynamic of the end is kind of uh, well, is it interesting? I don't know. The fact that uh, Lance Henriksen shows up with a shotgun and he is able to, uh, because I think like, I mean, Ali Sheedy and the dog are still basically like, you know, seeing eye to eye kind of. He comes up like he's all ferocious. She puts down the scalpel that she was going to stab him with. She's like, Max. And then he's like, and then Lance Henriksen ruins everything coming in with a fucking shotgun. And he is... Max tries to attack. He fucking shotguns Max. Max at the same time hits him. Lance Henriksen he falls him. onto. Wait, they go out a window first, oh, and yeah, then like, onto. Yeah, it was yeah. dramatic. Yeah, it was intense. Because you have to have shattering glass, mm-hmm. glass all over the mm-hmm. place, and he slams down onto a uh, cage, which the uh, it's hooked to an electrical socket. Apparently, that the little dog Spike is unable to like plug back in somehow and yeah. electrocute. Lance that Henderson. shot to me looks like it was reversed. Oh, yeah, definitely. It looked it like that like dog it, yeah. pulled it out and they just played it back. To, feels like, like it. he plugged it in. It looked really weird and unnatural the way the dog totally moved. Totally convincing. It Sorry. I believe yeah. that, that. Yeah, in a sure. movie, uh, the least convincing thing in a movie. That, <laughs> that a Terminator dog that swallows a cat. <laughs> I'm and, telling and you, the, 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 the fucking cat swallowing scene is 20 years from now. The only thing you're going to remember. Yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Also, awesome. It's heavily featured in the trailer. Oh, OK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like man's best friend. That's the one where that dog fucking ate that cat. Hole. Until they do it again, that's going to be the mm-hmm. standard. Yeah. Um, but Max, it turns out, has been fatally wounded mm-hmm. by the uh, shotgun blast, yes. and he passes away. He Regrettably, am, are we uh, sorry that the dog is dead? I mean, I don't. Like I to mean, kind of. It's animal. a Frankenstein situation. Yeah, I don't like to see an animal die. Yeah. But uh, the whole idea that it would have been a cool dog if it hadn't been experimented on. No, I'm just sure. saying, like. Some people did this to him and they yeah, killed right. him for it's it. Right. It's kind yeah. of fucked yeah. up, yeah. you know? It's, it's all fucked yeah. up. It's all Lance Henderson. It's fault. better for everyone just because, like, you can rest now. 
and not, you know, be experimented on and also not be a killer dog. <laughs> yeah, but there you go. Maybe less pain. Maybe not a shotgun to the chest. You know? <laughs> right. It's I'm not bloody. Saying maybe the maybe is just great. euthanize him. You know? Yeah, it's right. pretty bloody because yeah. there's blood all over the place. Yeah. She's got blood on her go. hands. Yeah. It's like Jesus. Yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little grisly, but mm-hmm. you know, it. it's better for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's the promise, as seen in the next scene, of a new life, a new start. Yep. Because the collie has given birth the one to night a sand, little, yeah, <laughs> and there is the little, uh, a little tiny Max, yep, little Max, just one, Max. just one in the whole litter, but one little Max. All those dogs are going to be a problem, right? Like, yeah, one that looks like Max, but all those little, little collies are going to be problems too. It's the one too. that really got the genes. Oh, so. sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all going to be killing people. It's very touching. But <laughs> I love the push in on that puppy's face, but like obviously puppies can't act, right? So, so that just puppy's like, just literally it just looks like a normal puppy yeah. just sitting there. And it's, and really it's like, goddamn cute. it's really, cute. It's, it's got a big the, squishy face, right, or at least freeze frame, eyes freeze or something. frame, and then eyes go like laser red. Yeah, 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 laser red. Yeah, that would have been the best. Yeah, I, I am kind of disappointed at some point. Like the dog's skin didn't get pulled off, and it was a robot Something. underneath. Mm-hmm. It's because of that or fucking a, poster. A little more skeleton, we, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah. yeah, you literally wanted but it he, to be the Terminator. But there's yeah. a bit better. But, but there's really no because I saw the, the fucking movie. Yeah, artwork. I know, but that like like he's a genetic composition of other animals, not robots or robot parts. That's n- that's not a part of the movie. At I would all. I would just hope that was the next step. It's like we genetically mutate this dog, and then we put a fucking robot. Skeleton in it. <laughs> <laughs> that just that's, sounds that's what I, great. That just sounds cool. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. That's man's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that brings us to. Uh, it is man's best friend. Mm-hmm. The, the, the finale of man's best friend. So, uh, any stray thoughts uh, before mm, we go mm, to mm, the. Mm. Stray. Stray thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the dog catcher trope is still a thing I see in movies and TV now. Is that ever going to go away? No. No. Because like even Parks and Rec Never. is guilty of that. Their, no, their it, dog catchers on the show are just like that. Yeah, this, there's, uh, what did I just watch? That One of those fucking dog movies, um, Dog's Way Home, oh, where the God. dog gets oh, lost. It's like Homer, the new Homeward Bound, <laughs> where the dog Christ. gets lost and is going to travel across the country to get back to his owners and everything. You should it's be ashamed fucking, you gave your money to that. I mean, the, you got to entertain the kid, all right? I've only got so many things but I can do But here, with watch this dog die over and over again for two and a half hours. That's the next dog movie, where the dog dies and Pretty sure they've made two movies about that now. I mean, well, yeah. Um, but uh, see, again, why would I go, one, if I like evil. dogs? Why would I go see a movie where a dog dies over and over again? I don't understand those know. movies. Who are they for? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Just, but you're just, saying there's evil, evil uh, dog, uh, dog catchers. catchers in that movie. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was evil. in this movie. That's where we get to see uh, Max uh, use his chameleon-like ability. He yeah. them he in turns invisible. It's awesome. Is it? Was it awesome? Okay. Well, I, I mean, an idea or execution. It's it's awesome that a movie about a killer dog has this many different. Abilities like he can pee acid, he can turn invisible. Like, oh yeah, he can understand three hundred fifty commands. He can smell poison and food. He mm-hmm. can he knows to bury a body after he murders someone. <laughs> like you know, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty awesome. The of what he's capable of. Oh yeah, he's a badass. Mm-hmm. He can Mass. run sixty five miles an hour. Apparently, apparently they, they had that cut up to the dashboard when the oh, cops yeah, were trying yeah, to catch yeah, up yeah, to yeah, him, yeah, and he was yeah, way yeah. ahead, and they were at sixty five miles. That's an good hour, directing, so. right there. Yeah. Okay, so. Tell you what, listeners, stick around because we haven't we've been hedging our bets here. We haven't actually told you what we thought about this movie or whether we would recommend it to you, although you basically heard the entire movie from beginning to end. But we're gonna tell you if you should go check this thing out. But first, we're gonna answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're gonna have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. All right, then. Did he have, does, does, does he, did he, do you think Igor ever had a puppy? Like, no, I don't want to know what happened to it if he did. Is it like an, he probably um, swallowed it whole yeah. Yeah. Like Probably. I think that might be a mice and men situation. I, I think Igor can do that thing, you know, where like how snakes can like unhinge their jaw to swallow yeah. something. I think Igor can do that and too. That's what I'm so saying. yeah, he probably he swallowed that dog. That yeah. mm-hmm. He thought it was food. We're like, Aww. here, have, have a puppy. Little, yeah. That's sad. I know. Holly's about to cry. Yeah, um, so, so Igor's just like shitting puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Not, it was a one time thing, just, Sean. Oh, no, shitting a puppy. Okay. Well, we, we learned. We didn't need to keep doing that. <laughs> well, we want to remind you that you can uh, in peace, write man. in be, and join the Freak Show family. And all you got to do to do that is uh, follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. 
uh, or Twitter at Sad Freak Show. You can get a hold of us via email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can also follow along on Instagram for the time of your life. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mike Camp about man's best friend. Mike Camp writes in and he says uh, that the only thing I remember is the dog having metal claws to climb a tree to kill a cat. Mm. <laughs> I feel like it's how most people identify this movie. Like, oh, is that the one where dog climbs a swallows tree to a cat? Swallow a cat. Yeah. Perhaps he'll die. Um, sorry, I'm trying to look up a post here that I have. Wait, maybe this one. Um, Did Igor not sort the mail appropriately? No, here we go. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, I've never seen the movie Man's Best Friend, but I have a tangential memory associated with it. The first video store I could rent a movie by myself from had this poster prominently displayed in the window. Mm-hmm. It was probably well past any level of popu- popularity that it earned. Yeah, it had a weirdly large marketing campaign for the type of movie it was. So that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, this was this was around. Like, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would remember this movie, or at least remember, like, oh yeah, that's the that's Killer Dog movie. Yeah, the Killer Dog, '90s Killer <laughs> Dog movie. What else did you have? Cujo. That yeah, was the like, 80s, yeah. That's the '80s Killer Dog movie. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. what was? It? Do we have a 2000s Killer Dog movie? The Breed. That's a bad one. That's that a one. really bad one. It's a Michelle one, Rodriguez one. I thought there was one with uh, well, there's the Pack. The Pack. You know, that was yeah. the '80s, but wasn't there one with? Uh, Rada Mitchell. Yeah, uh, okay, there's another I thought. Like, I think we, I think we just Yeah, the, the breed is where like Michelle Rodriguez and a bunch of people go to like a vacation island and then like there's like Killer a pack dogs. of dogs that uh, live on the vacation island. It's really boring though. Uh Travis Legler writes in, he says, I'm trying to remember, wasn't this movie kind of like a robo dog? Either way, <laughs> excited for another fun podcast. Puppy Pictures Time, our pup, <laughs> Gracie Bear. A German Shepherd Beagle Mix and our oh son Remy enjoy hearing the weekly podcast Yay! while running errands. Oh. We sent in a photo. That is a really so cute dog. It. Babies and a cute kid. Very it's a real, cute. looks like a really oh cuddly dog. Oh my god. Uh, babies with babies. Oh my god. Thank <laughs> you for sending dog. that in. Yes, show us your dogs. I didn't know a German yeah, Shepherd Beagle Mix would be so cute. Like oh, it's adorable. God, that's you know cute. what? Show us your cats too. <laughs> Yes, show us your cat. <laughs> Maybe for Michaela's killer cat movie. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen writes in and says, that scene in the tree cracked me up. Everything <laughs> about it is just insane. Congrats everybody yeah. up. I mean, you can't say it doesn't try and doesn't go go yeah, for go for something you haven't seen before. That's true. That's why it's um, a trailer moment. About last week's episode, RoboCop 2. Was that last week? Yeah. No, it was it's two weeks before. ago. RoboCop 2. the last two. episode that came out, right? Yes. Yep. Because last week was Lake Placid. So right. RoboCop 2, Douglas Wayne writes in and says, while I can see that RoboCop is the better film, I love RoboCop 2. It's the one I watched repeatedly as a kid till I wore out the tape. And that sequence where they reprogram Robo- RoboCop to be more family friendly is a great dig at the overly protective mommy groups that tried to nerf everything we loved back then. Mm-hmm. From making it so the Ninja Turtles couldn't use their weapons in the sequel right. to outright trying to ban Mortal Kombat. That's true. Thanks for bringing that up. I feel like... I should have Forgot made that, that connection when we were watching it, but I didn't. But yeah, like we that was like the Tipper Gore era where mm-hmm. she was mm-hmm. trying to yeah. destroy everything we love. Yeah, mm-hmm. Tipper. Mm-hmm. Uh, AP Ellie says, I always thought this was a well done action sequence, the, uh, the stop motion animated sequence mm-hmm. oh, at the yeah. end of Robocop 2. We liked it, it does look good. I liked it. And uh, Nick Destro says, Kane it was such a great bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Kane is Robocop 2 is a great bet. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to tonight's exciting film, Man's Best Friend, where we're going to go around the table, find out what everybody thought about it. Colin? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, what did you think about Man's Best Friend? All right. So I got to put my cards on the table here. When Michaela said we were going to be watching Man's Best Friend tonight, I was like, oh, uh, Why so, Colin? Well, because I actually just watched because it came out from uh, Scream Factory, uh-huh. so I watched it like a month ago. I had seen it on its original release. Did you I, see it on like, Blu-ray? No, yeah. Oh. So I saw it originally on VHS. I didn't sure. see it in the theater. Saw it on VHS when it came out. Didn't think much of it, and I had forgotten about it. Uh, it came out on Blu-ray, and it was like, "Ooh, man's best friend's coming back at it." So I watched it, and I was like, "Ew." 
So I sold it. So I'm sorry. So tonight, Michaela had to go buy her own copy. A <laughs> man's it's, best the friend. The streaming options are. We usually try to stream stuff down here if we can, but there was like no streaming options. You can't, not even for rental? Well, it was like $12.99 to buy on Amazon. You couldn't even rent it. You had to buy it. Oh. Damn. And then it was Voodoo with commercials, and we. Didn't want oh, to do so that. So it's free so on it was, Voodoo right now. Yeah. If you can sit through the commercials. But they're but they don't what about try Tubi? for act breaks. They will interrupt you in really yeah, crucial they'll moments. They'll just put it in it's, there. And yeah. Give a shit. And they do it really frequently. It's like every twelve minutes or something oh, like that. Yeah, the same it's, three yeah. commercials. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's worth unbearable. it if you really want to see a movie. But you know, it's free. But I guess. Um. But surprisingly enough, I enjoyed the movie this time around. I'm shocked to actually say this. But from like an absurdist level, I think, you know, I was grading it as like it was a horror movie the last time. And it has um, a lot of things like I was really irritated. This time I was really irritated by the preachy notion, uh, nature of the characters Again, in this movie. It's a lecture. Where it's movie. like, yeah, the, the filmmakers are lecturing you. It's like, yeah, OK, we, you know, I get it. But I did enjoy there's no the subtlety to it. Like. There's no nuance or subtlety to it. It's so obviously like a shoehorned in lecture. Yeah, because they're making it's when characters basically don't have their own voice. They're basically Absolutely. just uh, parrots for the stance of the filmmaker. And I mean, it's the filmmaker talking to you directly through. The, and it's like, uh, so the writing. Uh, yeah. But I did like the exploitation elements of the movie. Like this time I enjoyed the. You know, I mean, if you're going to make a killer dog movie, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Cujo, but this one is like, I'm not saying it's better than Cujo, but I'm saying that the, if you're going to go after these stereotypical dog moments and just kind of collect them, this is what your plot's going to be. And we're just going to set them all up, you know, in the middle of the movie, it becomes like just hitting all of these uh, moments. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the dog actor. I enjoyed the dog action. Uh, I enjoyed Lance Henriksen's like Gonzo performance. Gonzo may not be the right word, yeah. but it's like unhinged. Like when he flies off the handle, he goes from this kind of pandering, uh, you know, uh, when he's with the cops, you know, he's like, he's humoring them kind of, but you can tell that he's like, I really just want to get this going. And then like in the next second, he's fucking throwing papers around and yelling at yeah. the, and, he, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I, I think it's easy for Lance Hendrickson to do that. So I don't yeah. think it's a stretch. He's slumming in this, but it's also enjoyable. I like seeing him just yeah, like, it's fun to watch. Just, it is fun to watch. It's like, <laughs> like, I like watching him talk and then just slowly build up and just freak out. Yeah. Cause he's got a good, just talking to people voice and then just yelling at people voice. Yeah. I good. was extremely disappointed by Ali Sheedy in this movie. Well, she's got a hairdo that does her absolutely no favors, but I mean, I think, you know, Michaela was kind of saying this earlier. It's like, She's written as the protagonist, but she makes all the wrong decisions because we as the audience know, you know, the things a killer dog. She wants to go home and cuddle with it. And it's like, and she just keeps making just, you know, with her job, mm. you know, she's making boneheaded decisions there. Then she becomes basically like, I don't even know what the hell she was doing through the middle of the movie. You know, she had no impact on the plot at all. And then at the end of it, uh, well, the dog's going to come wherever she goes, so we have to have her go somewhere where she can confront the dog, and then it's ultimately Lance Henriksen that confronts the dog. So, yeah, in my mind, uh, Lance Henriksen's the protagonist in this movie. He's the one who knows, I created this thing, it's out, I have to catch it, and I'm going to do everything that I can, and at the end, he kills it, and he saves the day. Lance Henriksen is the fucking uh, hero. You make and a compelling and argument. <laughs> 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 Although you know the what? movie, like I said, the movie doesn't believe this. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? I do. <laughs> so, uh, but I, yeah, I mean, you should check it out. It's a fun time at the movies. Man's best friend. Sean, what'd you think? Hmm. I used to watch this movie a lot when I was younger. A lot. So much. Um, again, it's got its... Pretty uh, pretty weird and crazy moments, obviously, as we've mentioned. It swallows a cat hole. Uh, it does. In this movie. Uh, it does pee in a guy's face, which I had forgotten mm -hmm. about. Um, I mean, yep. it's, it's set up. Um, I suppose, I think the only, uh, is this R or is this PG? It's R. It's R. It and R? it's R specific for household violence towards a pet. Uh, <laughs> or oh, violence wow. towards a household there, pet. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Um, I think um, in order for this to... I'm 
I enjoyed a lot of elements of this movie. I'm not going to recommend it tonight. I think it needed to go to be a recommendation. It needed to go a little further. Like there's certain elements where I think it needs to exploit them more. Like I'm saying, I think it needs to be a little more violent. Yeah. Um, the, the the payoff for the violent scenes are like yeah, neutered because it's the nineties. It does. It you feels, can't show anything in the nineties. It feels very neutered. And I think in order to go like above and beyond, it needs to go to those places. Um, I want to see what his face looks like after he gets peed on. Uh, there's a guy, there's a neck biting dog <laughs> right. attacks guy in a neck, but you remember the beyond. Yeah, and that dog like rips. Yeah, you, got, you, know? you saw that postman's ankle get tore up pretty good. Not really. Yeah. No, you see blood. You see blood. I want, but I want to see a neck get yeah. torn like, out. And then dude gets his balls bit yeah. off. It's just kind of like the the jaws make contact <laughs> with his crotch. Then we cut away and you I hear. Feel the like echo of the I feel like they're. I feel like they're there. It's the nineties. I feel like they you, exist. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, you see blood, but we don't see any like flesh or anything. Right. I know? want to see things getting yeah. as, as, much, as uncomfortable as it would be. I want to see things getting like ripped off. I think that's why you remember the cat scene. I think so. you saw you were staring I saw at that it cat right now, get yeah. sucked down a, a <laughs> puppet dog throat. Um, and so it's got some like really memorable moments in that regard. Um, Lance Henderson's fun to watch. Um, Ali Sheedy is not, I don't think she's doing the movie any favors. I don't know. Uh, her whole thing kind of fell flat to me. It's not the reason you would come to this movie. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, it's, it's close, but I think this movie needed to go like just a little bit farther, um, to, to be a recommendation. So, uh, I pass on man's best friend. Holly. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Sean. There's not enough for me as as far as like the horror elements, because honestly, like tonally this movie, it just, if this is a, it's a dog movie. Like it it really is. I, I honestly felt like someone saw Beethoven and was like, you know what? Let's add some blood and make it an adult movie. Like that's kind of how it felt to me. Joe is too. And that's regarded as a classic. I mean, I don't know, like even the music in this was a little like there's a happy dog. Like it, there was just something off about it tonally. It just didn't make sense to me. There there wasn't enough. There wasn't there enough. Is, there's dog yeah. foreplay scenes and, and all that. And there's just it's it's and it's weird. It is weird. And I'm just I don't I just I don't like dog movies. So, I mean, that's a big part of it for me. But, yeah, I think there needed to be a lot more of a horror element for me to enjoy it, because even the parts that were saying were enjoyable for me. It just didn't even really do it. Like Lance Hendrickson was, he yeah he did a, he did a good job, but I was just kind of lost throughout the whole movie. It just didn't really land for me. Um, yeah, I, I got a pass on Man's Best Friend. It just didn't hold up for me. Michaela, this movie has things that I've never seen in a movie, and I don't think I'll ever see in a movie ever again. Uh, I don't think I'll ever see a dog pee acid on someone ever again. I don't think I'll ever see a dog romance scene outside of an animated movie ever. Do you remember the opening of the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 where the dog peed fire? Oh, and he brought Freddy, uh, Super Freddy to life. <laughs> That's true. I mean, that dog peed. But, like, was there a reason why that happened in that movie or no? Just I mean, because no, I just I, I'm not very well versed in the Nightmare on Elm Street movie, so that's why I'm like, was that a payoff or something or not? But yeah, isn't doesn't he give birth to Super Freddy that way? Right? No, it just brings Freddy back from the dead. But that is the movie with Super Freddy, though, right? Mm. The black and white, like no, the that's, crazy hat. That's Elm Street Five. Oh, yeah. never mind. See, I don't know anything about that mm. franchise. <laughs> um, but Cujo is a good movie, but it's a kind of a boring movie. It's a bottle episode. Not a lot happens in that movie, yet people love it and think it's so scary. And I'm just like, it's not really. As long as you stay in the car, you're, you're fine. <laughs> like That movie, I think I think it's regarded as highly as it is because it's a Stephen King property. I think if you took Stephen King's name off that movie, people would completely have forgotten about that. Uh, this movie, I think, is way more interesting when it comes to dog movies. At least it's trying new things and it's going balls out. It's acid pee camouflage dog swallowing a cat hole it's it, you know like they never really fully say what the dog is capable of so they kind of just reveal things along the way and i think that's a really interesting way of doing it i it's weird and it's absurd and i think you should watch it just to witness the weird absurd things that happen in this movie i know we talked about the dog romance scene but like it literally is shot like if you were to see a romance scene between two actual people <laughs> 
but they're dogs. And I'm just like, how did, how did that happen? How did they shoot unique. that? Like how, very like unique. even the way the collie like runs up the stairs and like turns around, and looks over her shoulder at the dog. And then, the, then Max runs up after her. And then the dog like lays on the pillows and like peeks her head out over the pillow. Like there's yeah. like f- active flirtation between these dogs. All the dogs happening. are very well trained. It's, it's insane. Pretty well. I think you gotta watch it just to, just to really see what we're talking about. It's, I've never seen another movie like this. I don't think we'll ever get another movie like this. Like I said, The Breed with Michelle Rodriguez is a really, really boring movie. And that was a high budget dog attack movie from like the mid aughts. And it's really boring. So I think if we ever do touch on these movies again, it's like the animal attack movies we're going to get in 2019 are going to be things like The Meg. We're never going to get like a small scale animal attack movie in modern times. It's always going to be some already scary creature it's not going to be something benign mm. so i'd say check out man's best friend just because you're never going to see anything else like it i think you got to see it at least once so. birdemic three no night of the lepus <laughs> night of the lepus <laughs> that's right go back and let it killer giant bunny rabbits <laughs> yep. oh yeah Although, no go one's go. seen that movie but that, we have we did, have when, yeah. did, when did that come out like 70 yeah that's what i'm saying something. like yeah. that time has passed of yeah. making yeah. movies yeah. about Where you build that, so. little sets and you have yeah. bunny rabbits yeah, yeah. yeah. oh it was yeah. fantastic oh, the giant <laughs> the giant animal killer movies yeah because you had the yeah. uh the, the whatever the fifties irradiated you? stuff, yes. yeah, then yeah. your frogs and, <laughs> yes. and your food of the gods and all that stuff, tarantula, right, yeah. mm-hmm. the giant yeah. human monster. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that lines up with what I was saying about like the late seventies, right? When we have the slasher arc, we have these these animal attacks. Well, arc. those all those it's were di- like dipped 50s down, ish, but it was yeah. Jaws but you said Night of the brought, Lupus was seventies, right? Yeah, was that before? I think that was before Jaws, but Jaws mm-hmm. brought like uh, mm-hmm. grizzly. Orca. And uh, orca, yeah. and mm-hmm. Day of the Animals, mm-hmm. and slugs was yep. that the yeah I mean, yeah the the slasher things. creature animal timelines are very parallel to each other mm-hmm. and they go on the same alligator. same they ride the same mm-hmm. wave yep God bless alligator mm-hmm. oh, okay. all right yeah. that's it this yeah is an alligator household yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> and Night of the Leap is I think yeah. uh, I, I mean think, is that no, coming out on a Blu Ray it's, it's Shout Factor released it on Blu Ray oh they did they did I've never the, actually seen that um, I've never I seen think it either. ridiculous it's, but it has oh, uh, shit. like I, DeForest I, Kelly from uh, yeah. Bones on Star Trek yeah. and Rory Calhoun and uh, I think we 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 did it for this podcast. Yeah. I was I'm saying, sure was we it on all the freak passed show? on it. Yes, <laughs> pretty sure we were all just like. Mm, oh, so we got no. some revisionist history here, yeah. huh? Well, Much uh, like no, the no, race. I'm still not recommending it because I'm pretty sure it, it was bad. Uh, it's bad. I'm pretty but sure now, it's a bad it, like, movie. It's the killer giant it's, buddy movie, <laughs> right? Um, and they're like again, like this movie. There's some stuff to appreciate in it because they do build tiny sets and just release rabbits. See, it, that's worth watching for me. Like I'll watch it just to see that. There you go. But I'm pretty sure we all watched it. We're just like, mm, no. But it also wasn't a lively, uh, uh, a lively crew. I was gonna say sometimes. Sometimes podcast. I wonder if it was this group. If it'd it be different. may have been the group at that time. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Y'all passed on the wraith, except for me. So I'm you, sorry. I stand like by I said, that. I'm, I'm, yeah, Colin, Colin's changing his. I'm changing my mind because I want to see it again. <laughs> it's. Um, <laughs> All right, so that is uh, the end of this episode. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin! Colin, what are we watching next week? We're going to watch the greatest movie ever made about a woman who gives birth to a Native American out of the back of her neck, and it's called The Manitou. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I hate it. Yes. That's right. You want to see this. Okay, so yes. that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak <laughs> Show, and until then, the basement is going dark.